Hey everybody, Scott here at EFI System Pro, and today we are doing the long-awaited and highly requested Sniper 2 teardown video. I'm going to wrap up a couple other little things in this video just to kind of kill two birds with one stone and show some differences between the two. Um, there's not a whole lot of differences, but we've got some. So just a, a real quick overview on the outside. As you can see, the ECU is still mounted right on the throttle body. Uh, this one is on the front. This would face the, like the radiator of the car. This is on the side. This would pay, face the fender. Now I'll get you in here and show you something a little closer. All right, so starting from the front, you can see some similarities with the fittings. And that plug there can also be a fitting if you need it to. Uh, I'm sure everybody remembers on the original Sniper, you had the inlet here, regulator and outlet here, uh, and you could use any combination of here, down here, or up here for a feed. And this was always the return. If you remove the regulator from here, or if you had a returnless system, uh, you could also use this as an input if it worked out for you. With the Sniper 2, we only have these two. They can either be inlet or outlet. Uh, you can plug one if you need to for a returnless system, or if you're doing kind of a deadhead style regulated system um, there's no difference in and out all the same and the sniper 2 does not have any sort of built-in regulator so next we'll come around here idle control valve it's the same idle control valve that's on the original sniper and also in the same location it just looks different because this throttle body kind of looks to be turned sideways so here's the sniper one throttle linkage and they are for the most part basically the same so the only difference here is they did give you 700 R4 and 200 R4 TV cable connections uh, where the original sniper you had to bolt on a bracket for that. One of the other exterior differences is this crossover hose that would connect the two uh, fuel bowls together, whatever you want to call them. They're you know, basically fuel rails. Uh, it's kind of the same setup here, but now it is cast into the housing. Uh, so there's no chance of a rubber hose leaking or anything like that. And not that we've seen that before, but it definitely could happen with a rubber hose. One other thing you'll notice is the throttle position sensor on the Sniper 1. In the Sniper 2, it's built into the ECU, so it's not adjustable and not replaceable. So now that we've covered some of the differences, let's start tearing into this one and see what's inside. So similar to this throttle body, it had two screws. This one has four, uh, but once you take those four screws out, you should be able to just pop this cover off and see the injectors. There we go. So you can see the same fuel injectors as the Sniper 1, very similar setup, idle control valve there, which you can replace without taking that off. It's just kind of buried in there. So this is where we find one of the major differences with the Sniper 1 and the Sniper 2 is the injector connector. Uh, in the Sniper 1, it was kind of a rubbery connector with not a very positive lock. These are more of a, a rigid plastic, and you get a better positive lock into the injector. Nice snap-in. It's not coming out of there like the Sniper 1. One thing I noticed, too, taking this apart is some lubricant for the O-rings here. Uh, it's real thick and seems to be a lot better than what they used when they assembled the Sniper 1s. So maybe we won't come across any that have pinched O-rings. It was a pretty rare thing, but it did happen occasionally. So we're halfway through this teardown. We'll pop off this ECU cover and see what we have in there. So we can look up inside here and see we have a couple of ports for various things. Uh, this would be your map sensor port, which goes here. 
And the Sniper 2 has the same uh, two bar map sensor as the Sniper 1. Up here uh, would be intake temperature, which is this part here. And so you can see that's made into the ECU and, and you can't replace it if it fails, but it's not a common failure point. Um, the last thing is here for throttle position. You can see it moves with the throttle. And that's picked up in this cavity here, like a Hall effect sensor. Uh, so being that there's no contact there on the throttle position sensor, uh, there's less to go wrong. Hall effect sensors are very reliable and it should be the same for this throttle position. So I hope that clears up any questions you had about what was going on inside of a Sniper 2 and hopefully clears up some differences that are there. Uh, this wasn't meant to be a full in-depth you know, A to B comparison of the two, just to kind of give you an idea so you could compare what was the same and what was different and how they how they improve things. Be sure to like and subscribe, share. If you have anything you'd like to see, uh, don't hesitate to contact us and let us know. Either, either comment on the video, uh, shoot us an email, uh, anything like that. Let us know what you'd like to see and we'll do our best to make it happen. We'll see you in the next one.